Dr Andre Batako joins us from Liverpool John Moores University to talk about the role of vibration in engineering. You have three types of vibration. You have the torsional vibration, you have the normal spring or mass vibration, you have the pendulum, two types of pendulum here that you can use. All of them are based on vibration. So when we talk about vibration, uh, it's fundamental thing in life because everything we do is vibration. What I'm speaking to you is only vibration given to you so you can hear it. Whether your heart beating is also vibration because it's a periodic effect. But vibration itself, many people do not understand that everything in this life vibrates. Whether this table that is standing there, this thing that is standing there, everything vibrates. There's nothing as such that will not vibrate. Everything oscillates in all manners. But there are some engineering applications which we want to look, which is more towards the standard we have here. We have this, for example, can be applied into oil drilling rigs. When you are drilling, there are a lot of vibration there. It's a big problem in your research environment. And also you have this one. Let's say you want to understand it. You have your car. Your car is on suspension. Or suspension, they are all into that. That is a where you apply this. This is also an oscillating uh, pendulum. Also, we use to teach that. Where can you see that? You see this in a big, big building. Take the tower in, uh, in Dubai. How do you stabilize this building against the wind gust? You must have, if you look inside, if you go on YouTube, you find it have a huge pendulum at the bottom. These are all based on this system. You got to understand the fundamental of this. Even if you are in civil engineering, that principle comes in. So that is why understanding this is fundamental. You're driving your car. The airplane that is flying, if you don't get it right and the wings start vibrating, you are out of control. That's why when you are in the plane and you say, fasten your belt, you are entering the vibration. That is a problem. You've got to understand that. And the basic of it is on this. It does not matter horizontal, torsional, they are the same thing, the same equation. And what do you need to understand it? Because if you let this to vibrate into something called resonance, resonance is when the natural, your force of vibration matches your natural frequency. What is natural frequency? The natural frequency, let's say you're walking around on the streets and you knock a lamppost, you'll hear a sound. That sound is mostly based on the natural frequency of the lamppost. But you won't see it. But that sound is vibrating. That is the vibration of the body that gives you that. So how do we look if we were to apply these three uh, type of vibration in life? This is applied with the technical one, which is the oil drilling or well drilling. The motor is in the top and will rotate the the drill string, we call it drill string. At the bottom is the tool, yeah? Now, what's happening, the oil usually is not at the surface. It's somewhere down five, 10 kilometers down the water, down the soil. So when you're drilling, you come across various rocks, the ignition rods, the internal granites, sandstone, and all of going, and they are of different hardness. And when you reach the hardest one, let's say you reach, let's say granite, you can face it. That is the hardest material to cut. But what happened there is that your tool, which is let's say 2,000 meters down there, there's no eye there, there's no one there. You put all kind of sensors there, they are all in mud. You couldn't see anything much. But you rely only on now on the sound or in vibration what comes through that. But however, when you have to trigger what's happening down there, it's a bit too late. Because at the bottom there, what will happen, okay, let's see here, when we, Focus on that. When we move that, we can see here that this is a reference that is telling my system what is the oscillation of that. And based on that period, as you move across here, you can calculate the natural frequency of that one based on the string length and its rigidity and so forth and so on. However, in oil drilling, this principle has to be understood before you start drilling. Therefore, at the bottom there, the motor here is turning at the top. You have a powerful motor system there that is rotating. And at the bottom, the tool can be, which is usually the tri, uh, tricon or whatever can be there, the different type of tool there. It can be actually stuck because the rock 
is hard and there's a lot of more or bits of rock stuck around it, it can be stopped. However, the motor at the top will still rotate. You have no clue what's happening until bang, it breaks in the middle. When it breaks in the middle, you see that the speed of the motor increases because it's running free. That's when you notice that you're in trouble, right? So this, you get to know that to be able to understand what is happening down there. However, there's some interesting things that you can do with that vibration down there. Uh, some intuitive things is that you can actually use that vibration down there or the friction down there, which causes something called stick slip motion. It reached one point that the tool at the bottom get stuck, release, stuck, release, stuck, release. But if you can control that motion, you can actually use it to drive a vibrate impact process, which is where I specialize a little bit. So this means that when you have the rotating, the motor rotating on the top, this is rotating at the bottom, you have a neutral point in the string. One part of the string will be on compression because you're putting load on the top. And one top, one part will be in the extension. Why is that? It is because in the oil drilling, basically the whole uh, uh, drill string is hoisted. And then you release in the weights at a certain rate. As you release in the weights at certain rate, a certain rate, the bottom part is in compression top part is extension because you're holding it that way. So understanding the natural frequency of that string, and when you see that it is start increasing, you can find, or you can decide that there's something going wrong down there. So why do we need to know the natural frequency? For example, if we go here, why do we need to know the natural frequency? Well, we know now that it's oscillating at its own natural frequency. But if I keep doing that, if I keep adding there, you can see that the extension keeps increasing. And the fact that the force that I apply to it is periodical. I keep putting force in. As I keep putting force in, where does that force go? It multiplies the amplitude of oscillation. And when that my frequency the, at which I'm oscillating it, matches with the natural frequency of that spring, it will go exponentially and it was, that's why it collapses. So you can see this notion of uh, natural frequencies in various systems. Uh, let's say, to give you a simple example of natural frequency. When you sit on the bus in the morning going to work, the bus at the bus stop stops. And if you're in the rear, you can hear the whole thing shaking. But when the, 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 uh, the bus starts moving, you hear nothing. Where that vibration went? But you need to understand this fundamental to be able to identify what's coming there. Why when the bus stops, you start feeling that the thing is shaking. Sometimes the windows shake. But when it moves, there's nothing. This is because the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the engine, we have a flywheel. And the flywheel tends to dump the, all the irregularity in the system. However, when it stops, your RPM of the engine is fixed. And that RPM may get into resonance of the whole structure of the bus. Then you start shaking because you are in the fix. If you stay there for a long time, that thing will fall apart with the time. However, if you increase the RPM, because when the bus starts moving, the RPM increases. So you run out of resonance and then you don't hear anything. The same is thing if you, if you go in the, in, in the truck, in the, in, the, in the farm, when you start your truck in the morning, it shakes mildly and then it goes quiet. And then when you switch it off, it does the same thing. This is because you are going through the resonance and out and back to the resonance and back. Even the machine tool that we're using now and then, all of them have the same problem, but in order to understand that, you support to understand this. So a similar thing here, if you want to look at the oscillating things, like a pendulum, a clear example is big, tall building. At the bottom, at the bottom, you have this big, big pendulum with dampers around. If you don't do that, if you don't do that, and you get to the top, you feel sick. Same way you are in the sea in a small boat that will rock you and you feel sick. The same thing there. 
But because of this vibration damping, you actually can control what people feel on the top of them. Here is a basic thing, but there's a lot of work you can do here in terms of even including research. Including research, you can do research on that. Because you have the output that will give you some parameter to get. You can get the acceleration of that. You can get any parameter here, though it looks simple. It's down to the imagination of the person who's standing to, in front of it to be able to use it.